I'm Leonard. I'm from Kuching. Yeah, born here and I grew up here. And I've been doing street art mural for about uh, five or six years. Yeah, I've been. I, I start painting in 2016. The most important part of Kuching is the people. I suppose it's the people, the community. Um, I um, um, I stay with. Okay. They are friendly, they are helpful. Uh, my art story begins in India Street, okay, which is the early masters, the one that is selling the cloth. Okay. Um, but before that, I know so little about this city. Okay. Um, it is street art that makes me know a little bit more. So doing, through, doing, doing, uh, through, through doing street art, I get to know a little bit more about this city, such as um, the history behind the business. Um, we, we call it sunset business in a direct translation. Okay, um, It's because it's slowly um, being taken by the, being replaced by the modern technology or machinery. Okay? It used to manually done by hands-on, like um, by, uh, by human. Yeah, I mean, like, that's the, the things that I start to understand more of it. Okay? Um, from the from the from the piece I painted in their streets, the textile seller. Then to Carpenter Street. A friend of mine, okay, he he ha he, he has a passion of studying all the um, all the history, the people's every details on like for example um, Somewhere near the pillar, there's a stone, and then even the stone have the story back then. Like he 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 is the, um, he zoomed in to that extent. Okay, he he studied basically um every corners of this historical area, the heritage building, and the um from from building to the shop owner, and then to the career business they are doing. Okay, he basically do a very good research into it. It's very dive, he dive deep he he dive deep into that, and then um. Besides just writing in a book, okay, um, he actually initiated um, to to do some public art, okay, and therefore he recruited me into the team, okay, and that's where I that's where I get to paint the mural. The journey of it begins. the The journey of my Street art in downtown begins there. Okay, and besides that, we walk closely to the council and the mayor. Their grandfather as the subject yeah. in, for the painting. I need to do research. Okay, research about the history and then the characters, the subject matters. Okay, to to interview them. Uh, what's going on? What is the tool they are doing? Um, is the younger is the younger generation going to continue their business? Is going to is the younger generation is going to uh, in inherit the business or something like that? Yeah. You see, all this story is actually um, it reflects Padungan. It reflects to it, it is what I'm going. It is what always been. It is what has been going on in that streets in that town. So this is the things that um, um, I'm doing when I'm being recruited. I need to find out the topic and then the things that happens in that, in that town. One of the highlights I painted are uh, the tinsmith, yeah, the tinsmith. The clanking voice when you enter China Street is very happening back then. Okay, it's happening um, due to it. Uh, it's very noisy because um, the street is full of tinsmith. They clank the whole day from around seven to six. Yeah, they're very um, busy. My late grandfather is also a tinsmith. Okay? So painting that piece reminds me of my late grandfather. Yeah, it brings back some childhood memory. Yeah, one one of my early uh, one of my earlier piece. This one, this one is provided. Uh, this one they provide a photo, mm -hmm. and then I get permission from the photographer. Yeah. Yeah. To to um use the photo as a reference. Mm -hmm. 
and the other two I take photo of them by myself. Yeah. I've been walking this um, 50 feet time, times 10 feet canvas in La Promenade Mall, uh, which is curated by uh, my gallery. It is a very detailed work. I spent a year doing, doing it last year. The whole year I've been doing, I've been doing the whole year in, I've been working on it for the entire year last year, and I can't get it done. It's still less than 50 or 40 percent. Um, I get the gallery to arrange the models uh, for me to to photoshoot and then I turn them into the artwork. Okay. There's a lot to study in it. Basically just uh, four colors. Um, the primary colors. Um, red, blue, yellow and white. Now just these four colors, then the rest are being developed or being mixed, uh, all of these four colors. This piece actually depicts the story back then, like um, 40s, 50s to 60s. It depicts the lifestyle back then. You can still see um, some like bullock cart, the, 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 the cow pulling the cart, the rickshaw man pulling the, the, I mean, the bicycles. Why, why do I painting such artwork? It's because all this while, Ever since I made my choice to be a full-time muralist and until the very day, I have been painting murals in downtown. So during the period that I'm painting in downtown, I get to mingle with, with, the, with, with people around the town, okay? like the Kingsmith and also um, people in India Street. So basically I mingle with um, locals here. Okay? I get to know a lot. Of, I get to know a lot of the story in the past from them. Okay, they are not. They are not hesitant to share at all. They are very generous. Okay, they are very talkative. They show as many as they can. That, that's the motivation and inspiration behind the canvas that I'm working on currently. Normally, I will be asked how I choose the subject of human or model into the painting. This one is based on the connection between myself as an artist to the um, subject. Okay, like the like like I'm being approached and and asked to paint a piece of ring ladies mural, the dying tradition, the falling their culture. Okay. So that piece, I get to visit them in person, in their resettlement. And I get to experience one day of her daily routine. I follow her um, to the jungle nearby, watch them dance in a river, okay? catching the river snails, then eating their own kind of traditional food seeing them dance, then try to mingle with them. And then, um, although we have this uh, very huge language barrier, okay, I can't speak their language, and then they can't speak my language, and then none of us know their language. And my friend, luckily I have a friend there who, who often spend time with her, with them, and then she get to translate to me a bit of what they say. I don't understand that much also, okay? But one thing I realized is that um, her smiles, her eyes, her eye contact, I felt they have many things to tell. They have many things to share from the way they look at me. And then that's where I felt um, motivated and I felt inspired from them to deliver that piece of five of them, the, the very last of them, in the mirror to immortalize them in the area. Yeah. It depicts their lifestyle, their dying culture, their colors, their way of life. I, I've been questioned regarding on how do I preserve the mural I paint. But for murals, um, it is meant for, it is, um, murals, murals have their own way of life. Okay? It is their nature to be temporary and that's the beauty of it. 
to preserve it, you can photograph it, selfie with it, have picture with it. That's how you preserve it. It's not meant to be preserved like how the museum do. Attempt to preserve it is only gets in the way. Because uh, just like when we get older, we tend to preserve how it looks. We even go for plastic surgery, but it didn't end up well. It just gets worse. So same thing applied to mirror. To fix that problem, the solution will be overlap it with a new mirror or buff it back white. When one mirror is gone, the new one will be born elsewhere. So don't worry about it.